with this podcast, I start by asking this power couple who I'm going to introduce to you in a second, um, some great questions, but we start off with a little bit of backstory and their backstory is actually really interesting. <laughs> it's really, really good. But what I'm, the reason I'm saying this is because it would be really easy to listen to my intro right now or to listen just a first few couple minutes where it's like, ah, it's just more intro asking some questions and whatnot. Let me go find a different podcast. Do not do that because this is a true power couple. Uh, not only are they good looking, actually this is my first podcast threesome if we were really thinking about it. <laughs> Couldn't be happier with, uh, with doing it with this couple. Um, but uh, they are so profound in the fitness and nutrition space with what they know, how they're applying it, what they're putting out to make sure we debunk the myths uh, that are out there, both internally from our own mindset standpoint when it comes to fitness and nutrition, but also the scams that are kind of happening. Um, but they're doing it in such a positive, the right way that they're not just attacking anybody. And uh, this one, like seriously, Liz, who you're gonna meet in a second, goes so deep on so many aspects of healing your relationship with food, um, understanding your emotions behind why you're eating, when you're eating, and how to go about building an environment with uh, not only a supportive significant other, um, but your environment and so that you're not starting and stopping every single Monday. I mean, there's just so much in this one. I can't, I can't, I guess I just shouldn't be even talking about it. I should just let us get on with the show. So um, Power Couple is uh, Art and Liz Roman. They own Strength Republic. It's an amazing gym in the Chicago area. Um, and then they run Nutrition Online as well and uh, just doing so much good stuff. So let's just dive right in. Art and Liz Roman, welcome to the show, my friends. Hey, hey. We're excited to be here. Thank you. What's up, dude? It's been such a long time. When was the last time we, we talked? Like uh, AJ Roberts, right? Mastermind? Man, oh, I one. think that's right. Yeah, we were doing something crazy about him back then and yeah yeah back when we were in cali yeah or it was in vegas it was in vegas that was, that was a good yeah. time yeah i don't know we, we've been so many different events and cross paths so many different ways because i mean our arts you've been in the fitness industry for how long now uh we're going on what roughly 20 years yeah. as far as the industry right right out of college yeah yeah so like well industry is probably 15 years right but i've been into fitness for over 20 Right. And then coaching and training and then doing nutrition for like 15. I own my own gym for last 10. And then I'm at Liz and then I got hurt to the industry <laughs> out, of, out of corporate. Right? Yeah. My backstory is a little bit different. So he has been coaching and training for 15 years, obviously. Um, I had to take a couple different transformation journeys of my own physically and mentally. So for me, I actually got a couple different certifications right out of college. Um, my biggest transformation was in college, actually, the first one. And so I, I fell in love with fitness. I've been, I was a dancer. I was a sports player, all those things, but didn't have a good relationship with food at all. Um, so while I was, let's call it uh, active, I wasn't fit and I wasn't lean and I wasn't feeding my body with what I need to nourish it with. So met art a couple years after that i was kind of on the second transformation journey um working on fixing my relationship with food to sustain results this time and really found a love for nutrition going through that journey after being with a holistic doctor and being you know diagnosed with my second autoimmune disease at 23 years old and really decided there has to be a decision to change here permanently. Um, and so I switched my mindset that this is not a diet, this is a lifestyle that I'm going after and I'm chasing health first. Um, and then met Art a little bit through that journey. And when we got engaged, I became home and I resigned from corporate and now here we are. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. Um, I mean, so many questions, but I definitely want to go down that path a little bit even more. You said dancer and, and very physically active. You put the emphasis on active for yeah. sure. And then you said damaged relationship with food or at least a struggling relationship with food. What, do those kind of correlate? I mean, so often within that world of being a dancer or anything in the performing arts, right? Like a sure. lot of like eating disorders um, tend to show their their place. Was that the case for you? Yeah, it wasn't for me as far as like anorexia or anything like that. It was more disordered eating of I had danced all night and so we could eat anything that we wanted, right? Whether that was pasta or pizza or whatever, that transferred over once I stopped dancing to weight gain, you know, after 
becoming sedentary, if you will, going to college. Obviously, there's the freshman 15 from drinking and going out with your friends. And then really the biggest piece for me was when I decided to diet again. Um, I chose what I thought was going to be the quick fix. And that was going to the gym a couple hours a day, eating like a bird, so severely under eating and over training, which obviously wrecked hormones, um, just didn't feel good, wasn't thinking you know, as well as I could be, and kind of had to recover from that process of the things that I was doing, but more importantly, get my mindset um, from a diet to doing something that was going to allow me to change numbers on the scale really over to a lifestyle of feeling good and living healthy and then stopped the what i call the monday mindset and that was starting a new diet over pretty much every week because i would restrict 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 and then fall into all the things on the weekend so monday through friday i was good the weekends were bad starting it on monday you know and i would do that if i had one slip up because i expected myself to be perfect and i talk a lot about this with my clients that they strive for perfection. We all wish that we were perfect, right? But the reality is none of us are perfect. And so when we set out those expectations and we fail, we don't feel good about ourselves, right? Mentally and emotionally, we beat ourselves up. So that one little slip up turned into, I might as well throw the whole day away to, I might as well throw the whole next day away and then start again on Monday. So I call it the Monday mindset. Um, so a lot of what I do now with my clients is really dive into why are we making these decisions and um, how can we change the mindset of dieting to making a lifestyle change and focus on being 1% better every single day? Because if you show up better today, you'll show up better tomorrow, a year from now, you've completely changed and turned your lifestyle upside down while making progress that you're going to sustain. Yeah, no, I love that. It's the micro that leads to the macro um, is that big difference. But when you're in it, if you're only seeing the micro instead of like doing what you're saying and pull back and be like, look, if we do this little thing every day, I mean, you explained it right there. And, and that's what pulls people in yeah. um, saying like, look, see, see what you can make a change in a year if we do it this way, as opposed right. to just getting it through the week. I'm curious though for you, and cause I'm sure you see this with clients too. Um, but so if it was a personal experience that is transferred over to how you teach this or, or just your kind of knowledge of, of people and whatnot. But um, do you find that, you had like this kind of epiphany, this kind of moment, was it getting diagnosed with a second autoimmune disease um, that then made it like this giant shift for you in terms of, man, I've got to make this a lifestyle. I've got to do something different. Or was it just like, uh, you, you just reached this pain place where you just wanted to go a little slower because you wanted to make sure it stuck? Yeah, so I would say the, the turning point for me was when I was diagnosed with the second autoimmune. So I had been searching for answers for a long time. Um, I wasn't able to go to the bathroom every day and my energy was really, really low. I wasn't sleeping great. And while I was performing great in school, it took all of my energy to do that. And so I um, sought out a holistic doctor and he basically you know, sat down with me and we went through you know, what the tests were showing and had this Kind of reality check of this is not i went to him to lose weight right he's like this is not about weight loss like your body is attacking itself and if you don't correct this it's going to lead to further autoimmune so when you get one autoimmune you're more susceptible to get two or three more and so i was like this is my second one you know i've got to nip it in the butt and it goes back to my first autoimmune disease was actually when i was um a child, I came home from kids camp and got up one morning and I was so swollen. I literally could not walk, like fell out of bed. And my mom thought I was trying to, you know, play rookie from school and not, you know, go to school that day. And I was like, no mom, like this is real. Like I couldn't move. Long story short, I was diagnosed with children's rheumatoid arthritis and was put on two different medicines, prednisone and methotrexate. And I gained like 70 pounds. Yeah. So at that time, this was 2000 or this was 1999. So I was 11 years old and, you know, as a child, then I was told you won't dance, you won't go to school, you won't be normal. She just kept praying for me. Um, every day we went to the children's hospital in St. Louis. I got off of the medication and I've been fine ever since. So I would say that's definitely a miracle from God, but then being diagnosed with that second autoimmune, it was like, okay, Liz, like this, 
there, this has to change. Something has to change and it has to be for your family and for your kids and, you know, longevity of life. This is not about a number on the scale anymore. So I would say that was the turning point, but also took me back to some of those feelings of where I was before. I definitely, you know, want to be able to move and live life and enjoy life versus being swollen and, you know, aches and pains and not able to walk or anything like that. Yeah, no, that's, that's powerful. And, you know, from different people I've had on, on this show and just different clients in general, like those, those things that happen when you're a kid, I mean, that's a form of trauma. And, uh, and oftentimes autoimmune diseases show up as a stress response to different traumatic issues that have happened to us. Um, and so the moment that seemed to happen, I mean, that's, that's definitely enough. And you took the power and went with it as opposed to using the weight as a shield or a mask to kind of protect yourself from hiding from all of the feelings that were there, um, which comes down to that mindset piece, which, which you were talking about. So how, when, when you're first dealing, you know, uh, starting with a client and conversations yeah. are starting to unfold, you know, kind of where do you begin? Because I'm sure for you, uh, it's a lot of the same where it's like, I want to lose this amount of weight and then this yeah. time. Right. And then yeah. you kind of have to start to peel back before then. And I just know so many listeners, listeners are in that place right now going, looking for tools, looking for things and just the questions and stuff that, that you present, I, I guarantee is going to make an impact. Yeah. So I think there's a couple of things. First, it's never about the scale. So I always say confidence is the sexiest thing a woman can wear. And when I wanted to lose weight, it wasn't to see a certain number on the scale. It was to feel good about myself, to be able to go out on dates without having a shot of tequila or three glasses of wine before I went on the date, just to, you know, come out of my shell. I'm a very outgoing person. So, you know, being shielded behind this insecurity mask of weight essentially right like I was letting that weight control how I felt about myself how I was showing up in my relationships with my friends being jealous of my friends being able to wear certain size clothes or how they looked um, holding myself back from stepping forward and doing things that I wanted to do as far as work and promotions and you know presenting presentations because I didn't look good or the way that I felt about myself was essentially being shielded um, by this layer of fat and insecurity. So it's really never about the weight. It's how do you want to feel in your life? How do you want your relationships? You want to have sex with your husband. You want to, you know, be able to rock your skinny jeans with confidence and, and just feel good about yourself. There's nothing better, especially for a woman or more empowering than being confident in who you are and how you, you look. And I know for me, I'll never be a size two. That's not my goal. My goals physically have changed, you know, over the years and especially being a new mom, they continue to change and unfold. But it's, if I feel good and my relationships are good, that's what I care most about. So when I start with clients, sure, most of them come because they have tried all the quick fixes or the fad diets and they might have heard my story about doing Weight Watchers and I lost 40 pounds and then I gained 50 back and they can relate because they have done certain diets, but they didn't fix their relationship with food. So therefore they gained it back or they continue to yo-yo. So when I talk with them, it's really about, they have these numbers in their mind, right? And I, my first question is, tell me where that number comes from. Why is 140 the magical number? Why is that where you think you'll be happy? Because most of the time people reach that 140, they're still not happy because right. it was never really about the scale, right? So kind of peeling back the layers of where they want to get to emotionally long-term is what I need to know as a coach and understand because there's a lot that goes into it. I would say my work, 80% of it is really mindset and emotional versus you know the, the food because anybody knows that Snickers is not as good as <laughs> chicken breast or you know vegetables, right? So it's really about helping them uncover their true why and what their long-term goals will mean to them when they get there. Uh, I love it. It, it. You know, as you were explaining the whole kind of concept of your life um, leading up to it, and it was all of these feelings and they were talking about living. And I'm like, man, the only thing that was replaying in my head is like how you're feeling determines how you're living. And mm -hmm. so it's like, you're chasing this feeling that you're going to have with this magical number and yet it's not true. It's who you are now that needs to be brought into that. And, and your, your goal is to uncover that for the person so that they can 
ultimately be happy throughout the entire journey. And um, 100%. Yeah. We only get one life. You know, I talk a lot with clients, especially moms. You know, that's a lot of my clients are females, but I talk with them about, you know, you only get one life. And if you're not happy with yourself, that's going to carry over to your relationship with your husband and that's not going to foster a healthy relationship there. Your kids are going to see that because they're watching you every single day and you really have to figure out what is it that makes Susan happy and how can I enjoy the journey along the way? And instead of looking at what I'm doing nutritionally as a, um, like you're taking everything away from me or as a restriction or I can't have this, choose to look at the positives of how you're going to feel when you get to your goal. Choose to keep that vision in your mind of who you want to become so that you can enjoy the journey and, and enjoy living ultimately, right? Because every day is a gift that we have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, it's feeling exchange, right? Exchanging how you feel right now. I don't feel like working out. I don't feel like eating this healthier, lighter calorie meal. I feel like sitting on the couch and ordering a pizza is what I really fucking feel like, right? Mm -hmm. But ultimately, how do I want to feel tonight when I am just alone and the stories are finally quiet, you know, ramping up inside my head or quieting down depending on like your personality type? And how do I want to feel five days, five years from now um, is absolutely, absolutely critical. So, yeah. I, I, and, and then feeling too, how do I feel after I've had these foods? So how does that food serve you? Right. A lot of people, when they're emotionally eating or stress eating, there are emotions that come before there's some event that's triggering them. There's right. something that's led them to this point to make a decision. And then they have feelings after. So my example to all my clients, which is very true, when I worked for um, Target and Human Resources, when I say I had an unhealthy relationship with food, it was to the point where my secretary knew to buy chocolate chip cookies. If, if I was coming into a shit storm, let's say I had like 10 call-offs running a Target store, right? And she knew I was going to be stressed or upset. She would have chocolate chip cookies waiting because at that time, that's how I dealt with stress. Like, oh, I'm just going to have a chocolate chip cookie. You know, we'll deal with this in five minutes. But ultimately what happened after is one, I felt bad physically because I had a sugar crash, right? Obviously chocolate chip cookies are not great for us. Um, wasn't giving me energy. And then emotionally, I started to beat myself up because this didn't align with my long-term goals and what was wrong with me. Why couldn't I stop? myself why couldn't i say no or throw the cookie in the garbage can right and so i had to dig down emotionally to figure out that i wasn't going to let this control me anymore i had that trigger i had to change my action if i wanted the outcome to change right so with that response or reaction so a lot of people what i have them do is kind of journal if there's someone who uh, struggles emotionally or stress eating i have them journal how are you feeling leading up to your choice to indulge in the cookie the pizza right and then how did you feel after so that we can remember these pain points along the way and start to change the behaviors because okay next time i come to this point and i have a decision to make i have to remember how i felt after and then it's not worth it anymore and i don't want to feel that way so that is something that i think is huge for a lot of people because it's not easy if you've never experienced this before, but it's not easy to make those decisions, especially if nobody's around you or nobody's looking or you're a single person, you know, it's late at night. Maybe the kids have gone to bed, your husband's out of town and no one's watching you eat the entire bag of Doritos or whatever that looks like for some people. And so it really digs deeper into the emotions and having people understand how their decisions make them feel. And then we inflict that, on ourselves most of the time yeah yeah because really it's just the food is a distraction based on that trigger feeling so that trigger is then you know from anger or whatever emotion right goes into whatever cue we we're gonna have and then we get a craving and then it's a response and so it's replacing yeah. that that response in a different way or learning a new way but you're you're taking it a step further which i love is identifying what that is so that we yeah. can tap into that feeling and then even give ourselves that feeling in a healthier manner since obviously we yeah. need it right like we, right. we need connection and so it's probably the oxytocin that we're missing from yeah. not having the relationships you've talked about that multiple times i think that's so spot on so maybe it's a lack of connection that we're having with other human beings and, yeah. and closeness and so you're really replacing it with sugar or alcohol or yeah. whatever the case may be 
Um, yeah. So there's one thing you mentioned, and it was, you know, talking about your target days, which ironic, I, I was uh, a TL for, for target way back That's in the awesome. day. <laughs> way back in the day. <laughs> yeah, it was, I was uh, still in the middle of college um, back then. So uh, I was guest experiences uh, team. So you knew what it was like when all the cashiers called off, like... <laughs> I Wednesday did, did. before Thanksgiving. <laughs> no, on Black Friday. <laughs> Black Friday, yeah. 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 Um, so, and then all you just see someone run out the, the front uh, with a TV in their thing, and I'm like, they didn't pay, but that's not my responsibility. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, but what was interesting, you talked about, like, you know, there, there would be cookies there by, you know, the person who brought stuff in. What I thought was interesting, because so many, so many people that, you know, like you guys, couple, married, one person tends to really want to work on their nutrition and lose weight. And the other person wants to support them and, and whatnot. But yeah. we've conditioned so often that spouse or that other person to act and be a certain way. Like you actually conditioned her to bring you cookies. Yeah. Right? But what right. I thought was really good, and I want to elaborate because I know listeners need to hear this. It's so easy to blame the other person they're sabotaging my weight loss they're sabotaging my results and you literally were just like took extreme ownership and said i could throw this away i could do this but it's helping re like we've programmed them to act in a certain way like and sure. you talked about the monday diet right and they're going to bring yeah. home pizza on friday because every single week for the last two years we've started a monday diet and on friday we always stop so of course they're just trying to make us feel better and put us out of our misery because we've conditioned yeah. them to do so yeah and we hear that so much in a lot of the clients when they come in, you know, we talked about, we talked about, about nutrition and, and their goals and like how it, if it's going to be easy at home or hard at home with a husband or with a wife. And most of the time they say, you know, like my husband, because we're trained mostly women. So my, my husband is not supportive. Yeah. You know, after 10, 15, 20 years of marriage, you know, and that, that boggles me how, if you love your spouse, if you love your wife, if you love your husband, and that's something they want for themselves to be healthy and to improve, obviously they'll reflect on you also in the whole relationship. How, like, how the, how the fuck are you not going to support your spouse? Yeah. You know, and, and it's such a common thing now that, you know, like for all your listeners, you know, like if you have your husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend, like support them if they're trying to go to the next step or if they have a goal, because otherwise it's like your foundation for, for your relationship is going to crumble if you're not there for them supporting you. Yeah, and so all the listeners right now are like jealous of Liz. They're like, um, can we have art? <laughs> he's, he's good looking, he's got tattoos, so he's got an edge to him, he's badass. And uh, he's yeah, I'm supportive. <laughs> and he's supportive, he's, yeah. He's smart as hell and supportive and yeah. Yeah, yeah it's sad to see because you know even when i talk with women um there's a, a lady that comes to mind that i just spoke with a week and a half ago and she sent me three emails since that she's still trying to talk her husband into letting her work with me and you know she did a meal prep seminar with me last week she texted me after my god this is amazing and i'm still working on him i'm hoping and it's really sad to hear from women that they don't have that support in their household because it is hard when you are doing something, you know, my, my second weight loss journey started after a bad relationship. Okay. It wasn't bad the entire time. Right. But like a, a bad breakup, but we were together for a few years. And while I was doing these beach body videos and getting certified in turbo kick and other things, fitness things, I kept saying to him, you know, I really want to lose weight. I really want us to eat healthier. I want us to start cooking at home and not going out all the time. And he traveled a lot for work. And when he would be home, it was no support. You know, let's go out to the bar, let's drink and all these things. And so I get it. I've been on both sides of that where you are doing something and your spouse or significant other doesn't support you. And it's extremely hard to stay the course and stay disciplined. Nobody wants to go out and drink water and ask for chicken breast and green beans, you know, while the other one is getting your favorite pizza and fries or whatever, right? Yeah. So sometimes for people, they need to sit down and have a real conversation. And I've had this conversation with a few of the women that I work with that, 
you've got to create a better environment for yourself and let's at least control what we can control starting with grocery shopping and you know you might have to have conversations with your kids that we're not buying ice cream anymore it will be a treat now and then um, or tell your husband that if he wants his bag of Doritos that he has to go to the store and buy them because you know you have a goal and you need him to be supportive and if it's in the house you're more tempted so Sometimes you do need to just have that really real conversation and be humble and ask for support. But on the flip side of that, if they're not supporting you, I guess that would be kind of a different conversation to have because it does, it breaks my heart to see a lot of the people come into either the gym or just wanting to work um, on their nutrition and have that person in their corner and not be supported to do that. Right, yeah. it's, it's not just with food. You know, like what we're sitting at this sales table, like, yeah, like, we have money or my husband's not going to support me. It's like, like, yeah, some of our excuses, right? But also some of our, them to tell them the truth. And when a wife says that my husband won't let me train with my own money, and then she goes out to buy power tools and an extra TV for the bedroom, you know, like that also doesn't make sense to me. So like the, the just of this, you know, the conversation that needs to be had it, it's not about fitness. It's not about nutrition. It's about like your marriage, yeah. you know, because that that's the foundational problem here. And it's got yeah. nothing to do. It's got nothing to do with money. But then a lot of times, people don't have those conversations, and so then they, the wife, I've heard it from a lot of them, they eat their emotions because right. then they're unhappy, right? I had a lady last week. She came to me and she's talking to me. And she's like, I didn't email you back because I didn't want to tell you that I got up in the middle of the night and I went. To the gas station and bought a chocolate donut because I knew that they deliver them at a certain time. And she's like, the whole time I'm in chocolate milk, you know, and she's like, the whole time I'm doing this, I'm like thinking of you in my mind, 1% better every day. And so she eats as fast as she can and she throws it away and she goes home. And I was like, I gave her a hug and I said, I just want you to know that I love you. And she's like, what? And I was like, well, what we're talking about here stems from something totally different going on you are reacting to these emotions. And so, you know, I don't want to dive into like a lot of the relationship stuff because no one really knows. There's two sides to every story. I always say that, but sure. yeah, for some people not having those conversations of the foundation of the root cause of what's really going on, it impacts them. And so then they emotionally eat or don't eat. And which is also the other end of the spectrum um, for some women where they're struggling that their husband doesn't support them. They don't look at them the way they want them to. And so they think that, you know, they are not worthy of being confident in themselves and feeding themselves and nourishing them and taking care of their body. Why does it matter? Essentially. Yeah. Right. And they lose their confidence, they lose their self-esteem and they feel belittled, right. And their husband, because he's a, the man of the house, you know, he controls the money. It's, you know, it's coming back from like the, the 60s and the 50s, especially if it's a little bit old, older population that we're talking about. You know, the, the man in the house controls the money, his money and your money. And if he doesn't say okay for me to do something, especially if it's health related and not buying a blanket, you know, like if, for example, if Liz wants to get a coaching or, or, she, or she wants to take a class or a course or, you know, it's something that will accelerate in any way it's like i'm 100 percent. it's like i'll help you pay for it or I'll let me pay for it you know so it takes stress off your plate but if she goes to bed Bath and beyond if she wants to buy like an, an extra like pressure cooker i'm like whoa you know we got like two pressure cookers already i don't need three right so, so material things are totally different right yeah. but when you're looking at you know anything that will improve your health especially because you know health is wealth um they'll improve your health especially and overall it's going to increase your confidence and your relationship status you know and for a man it's like yeah like if your wife feels better and she looks in the mirror and she's more confident it's like obviously like you'll probably get some out of that too right. <laughs> you know so like pay for it to go to the gym yeah. man. like it, yeah. it works both ways yeah, yeah. what's well, interesting you know i'm hearing uh, and i've never really thought of it from this perspective but all of it is a communication issue it's yeah. a communication yeah. issue. So it's in our, our inability to communicate effectively. And you guys talked about like having that crucial conversation um, with a significant other, but a, a lot of it, you know, that you guys were saying, like, we have to tell them this and we have to tell them this and we have to like implement this. Um, but then Liz said one piece is, you know, she said, ask for support. And I, and I think that was just like being light bulb because it's like, really, it's a communication issue with this other person because we haven't had the relationship where communication was clear and open in that 
otherwise it wouldn't have gotten to this place, right? And, wow. uh, and then a com communication issue with their self, which is why they're struggling with these emotions or feelings that they're then using to sedate with food. Um, yeah. So, so many people struggle to ask for support and ask for help. I think not just with food, you know, um, in any area, if, a, if someone is struggling in school, for example, getting a tutor, it's like humbling yourself to say I'm struggling, you know, is looked down upon for in some families and same thing for moms. So as a new mom, I actually started a mom's group just for women who want to support and build each other up and not have to worry about being mom shamed or, you know, be like, there's so many things that people just write because they get bold behind keyboards, be judged. Um, and so that is another area that I think so many people struggle to say, like, I need help. I need someone. I have this new baby. This is a whole new life. This is a whole new lifestyle now. I don't have time for myself. I can't go to the bathroom by myself. I just need someone to come and help me for two or three hours because, you know, in this <laughs> country, uh, we're expected to do it ourselves and to go back to work within six weeks, which is extremely sad, right? But so well, many people- Well, you're asking for help. You're not a real mom. Right. So, so we got that. Yeah. But then wait, wait, yeah. wait, you're expected to go back to work by half of them, but then the other half are going to tell you, go back to work. What kind of mom are you? <laughs> you're like, hundred percent. <laughs> and so I think in, in, in every area of our life, you know, just, I would tell women, especially it's okay to ask for help and to ask for support and to need a person in your corner. A lot of people, I have a coach, for way more than nutrition. I know how to count my macros. I know what good clean eating is. That's not why I have him. <laughs> you know, he helps me navigate certain things, but it's really the accountability and the support of somebody else being in your corner that's not family, that's not friends, right? Yeah. Um, and so I think a lot of people struggle from a humility standpoint to ask for help and it's okay to ask for help. That's how you get better. That's how you improve because we're all gonna fall down. We're all gonna fail. We're all gonna face plan into pizza on Friday night at some point in time get back on the wagon the next morning. Don't let it ruin your whole weekend. Don't wait until Monday, you know, just move on from it and start fresh. Right. And at the same time, if there's something you're struggling with, you know, it's either, you know, your nutrition or your fitness or, you know, relations, whatever, right. Which you rather ask, ask somebody for help that can help you within 10 minutes or just try to navigate the waters by itself and take you two years to figure it out. Right. Because there's people that specialize in certain things, right. So if you're, if you're a doctor, you know doctor stuff. Like you're not going to try to go to court and be your own lawyer. There's some right. lawyer doctors they are just crazy, right? But you know, if you're trying to lose weight, you get yourself a coach that will help you lose weight instead of you know going through the magazines or following people on Instagram. Yeah. You're just trying random stuff that probably doesn't work. Yeah, no. Nice like ad from Doctor Oz. <laughs> <laughs> It's so true. Unfortunately, the ones with the most dollars and the, the, the loudest voices get put out there. Um, but that's why there's little yeah. sanctuaries like, like Strength Republic and, and stuff that you guys have built up that can foster not only a community, and, and, but also a yeah. culture that embodies truth of what actually is happening and, and the right coaching and support. And I think that coaching piece is, is gold, right? We look at, it's so funny. We want to do it all alone, but yet we look at like every professional in any world or any position or anything. They all have a coach, like the world's greatest athletes all have a coach yeah. um, for, for, for yeah. uh, I love it. Really good stuff. So you guys have been doing um, a lot of really good. I'm going to make sure I put up all your, your links to your stuff for people to follow you guys. Awesome. Cause what you've recently shifted to is doing uh, kind of these debunking myths and that's so needed um, because you're not attacking or coming from a negative place. You're just literally going like, all right, here's what's being said. Let me shine some light on it. Just so you know what is real, what is not. And then let you go along with, about your day. Like it's just so simple and so spot on quick and easy. And I was like, that's awesome. I don't have the energy to do that, but I'm so happy they're doing it. <laughs> I don't know how you do it with a four month old baby, but um, it's, it's perfect. And so uh, just because listeners are trying to debunk myths and you guys are nailing this, obviously I'm going to make sure that they go follow you and, and reach out for any kind of support or coaching, but uh, we got to hit a few of them. So I want to hit some <laughs> in the world of fitness um, and let uh, the man with almost 20 years of experience and 
Yeah. Like we're talking about hiring a pro next time I need someone to write my strength programs. I mean, he's the guy. So, so what do you got art? Your myths. Oh, my myths. Sorry. I didn't segue that question. <laughs> <Your one. myths. laughs> so we have done, um, yeah, we've done a few of them. So he wants the, the yeah, workout so, ones, so the resistance bands. And uh, so yeah, <laughs> let, let, let's talk about all the Instagram people. That's my not favorite one. Yeah. People, and I, I fell for this when I was younger too, because you know, when I was I was growing up, I was overweight was a kid when I was a kid. So when I, I got into training, I got I started with Arnold's Encyclopedia. Yeah, the big gray black one yep. with him flexing the collar. That's how I started in my mom's basement, right? So that leading into college, and that's why I got more into fitness. And then following, well, back then, back then it was more magazines like Muscle Mag, Muscle Fitness, and all that stuff. So we would look at you know the, the pros and their workouts, which not the workouts, right? And try to do those. <laughs> but now everything shifted to Instagram and YouTube, right? So all the influencers now on Instagram and YouTube, people are following them thinking that what they do on social is actually what they do in real life. Yep. And most of the time it's not, right? So on social, you'll, you'll see them, you know, doing you know, heavier weights or just some goofy shit with like, you know, Bosu balls or resistant bands or whatever, right? But in, in real life, like that stuff doesn't really work. What works is your, the, the core basics, like the barbell squat or the deadlift or the press, you know, like the pull-offs. So like the basic stuff they invented in like 40, 50 years ago, which is the foundation of training. And now people are just trying to, you know, take so many different variations that will waste a lot of time in your gym and not give you the fastest and best results. Yeah, like my my debunk is you know stop following Instagram people and just get yourself a coach that knows how to properly program and keep and put you through resistance exercises and make sure you do it right and then as you gain strength like there's always going to be the next step because it's progressive you know like if you go into Orange Theory or, or what else is in Arizona forty five yeah yeah we got all those. So, Camp. Yeah, so all those like boot camp kind of places, places. You know, like most of the workouts are set from their HQ from uh, from a corporate, and they're randomly put together. That's why they advertise that we have sixteen hundred different exercises, and it's never the same workout. But that's not how the body works. You know, you have to go through the same stuff so you can get better at the same stuff. Right. So, like, for example, if you're doing squat, you need to squat fifty pounds today. You should be able to squat fifty five pounds next week and then at 60 and 70 that's how you know you're getting stronger and you work on your form and all this, all, all this other stuff that goes along with it and obviously you follow the nutrition plan to support your gains your gains yeah, yeah. <laughs> versus like the i want to say from a women's perspective mm -hmm. i'm bombarded with ads all the time of like the little resistance bands and they're like walking and it's cute and they look great and they're very very fit um they didn't get toned. They didn't get fit this way, right? right. Like these resistance bands did not make them strong or give them a six pack, but it's what looks cute and it's what's attractive and it's what's getting the most views. It's what sells, right? Right. So what's going to get them more followers Yeah. and what looks good in pictures. Sure. But then, so I would ask listeners, like how much time and money do you want to waste buying program after program that you're going to try to do at home or these resistance bands that you're going to order in the mail and try to follow a DVD when the time comes to set your alarm, who's holding you accountable? Do you have a coach in your corner? Do you have somebody watching you so that you're not wrecking your back or your knees while you're doing these things? Nine times out of 10, no, there's a 5% success rate with at home workout programs, right? Like brings me back to the beach body coaching days that, um, art and I actually, it's funny. We had the same upline coach before we even met each other, but 5% success or less, actually, it was, we've read an article that said it was in 3%. Right, so, so take, take the beach body is like $300 million company. Yeah. Right. But if you turn on, yeah, if you turn on TV in the middle of the night, there's always going to be ads. Like 20 rounds ads. There's always going to be ads. So right. the success rate for beach body programs is roughly five, like like Liz said, like five, three to five percent. And they have all these before and afters and all these testimonials. But you also have to think if it, they have a million people that submit their stuff or they do the program and they have 
500 pictures like take the odds of that yeah yeah so well, the whole thing is like like the the only people who have ever had come on this show who have had a transformation they have lost the weight and kept it off for longer than three years Awesome. So if you, if you've lost a great amount of weight, like I'm super excited for you or made some kind of transformation in whatever regard, like I high five you, I support you, but I've had people like say like, yeah, I'd love to come on the show, share my story. Like, you know, I had a traumatic incident and put on weight as a shield and all this stuff. And I'm like, I love that. I would love to highlight it and share it and it would resonate with people. But if it hasn't been for three years, statistically proven, we know that 95% of people who lose weight will put all of it back on within three years. So there's only a 5% success rate within that as well. So it's like out of an integrity thing, unless you lost the weight almost so long ago that your friends and family even forgot that you were a bigger person, I can't have you on this show, right? Because you haven't, we haven't sustained it long enough to know that you've made this identity shift that it is now an embodiment of who you are and the lifestyle that you're going to live forever, regardless if there's like five to 10 pound blips. But when we're talking the significance, like sure. it's gotta be from that place. So yeah, I mean, like what you're saying is, is awesome. It's two, two totally different things. I mean, one is loosening the weight, which is, you know, it's, it's hard, but it's not as hard as keeping the weight off. Yeah. Right. Right. Cause you can, you can lose, you can lose a hundred pounds in a year, or right? You can lose a hundred pounds in less than a year, depending on what you're doing. But to keep the 100 pounds off for the rest of your life and then adjust your lifestyle and your habits and everything that will follow you forever to keeping the weight off and being healthy and being fit, like that's a totally different ballgame. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So I was saying before, and I'll just reiterate and highlight this again before we move on to his second myth busting. Um, for all of the people listening, you just have to ask yourself when you're searching for a coach or a program. One question is how much time and do I want to waste between now and really getting to my goal? So I can buy a $97 program, which is cheaper than hiring a coach. We can all agree to that, right? But a year from now, I want to be at my goal. And is that going to be the thing that gets me there? Probably not. Right. Okay. And you know, the second thing is, is the program that I'm choosing or the coach that I'm choosing going to be sustainable for me long-term. You have to connect with your coach and you have to be able to do this program. I talk a lot with my clients uh, about this nutritionally, but from a programming perspective, let's take CrossFit, for example, is that going to be sustainable for you to do when you're 65 or 70 years old? Probably not right? Does it fit your lifestyle? If you're a high stress person traveling, don't sleep a lot. And then you're trying to get in the gym and wreck yourself. Is that sustainable for you long-term? You know, maybe it is for some people and, and it's nothing against, you know, those programs, but I just think it's very, very important for people to ask those two questions before they make a decision to click that buy button, because there's been so many people, including myself that have wasted time and money on programs that I thought was going to get me to where I wanted to be. We could go down a rabbit hole of isogenics and other things like that, but we won't. Um, so you just have to make sure that what you are choosing to do is going to set yourself up for success. So a year from now, you haven't wasted more money that you put that money to good use with a coach who's going to get you to your goal. Yeah, uh, I think that's, that's, that's great. The CrossFit thing totally makes sense too, even with what Art was saying when it comes to, you know, the, the big blocks of what is going to sustain you long term. And, and then what you guys were saying about the resistance band, you know, little bikini model type deal, because ultimately when we look at like the people that are in the CrossFit game, not CrossFit to get them, people that are signing up for that, like signing up for CrossFit, think like, oh, if I just do CrossFit, I can eventually be good enough to do that. And then you realize, oh wait, they're doing a really, really like basic, like conjugate style four day a week strength training program. And then they're doing different modalities within it. They're not even doing crossfit which is they're not even doing a lot <laughs> right which, and, which makes yeah. it even better right and and so it's like I'll, I'll have to tell people too i'm like well is there a specific body type that you're actually going for and like to i kind of identify from that perspective um instead of just looking at these people that are selling these types of things like you're saying and i'm like all right there's probably an athlete well, what does that athlete do oh they sprint okay cool so and they lift some heavy weights for them wherever that is okay cool and then they do some recovery stuff Cool. So since it's working for them and that's the person you want to look like, what do you think if we kind of take the same approach? <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. You know, and like if you're looking at, 
you know, going back to, you know, like Instagrammers, it's good to have a, like a visual goal of what you want to be, look like, like what you want to be. So like, if you have, you know, if, if you're a guy and you find Instagram model guys, I, I kind of sort of want to look like that. Right. Then tell your trainers, like make me look like that and follow the program. Cause he'll know a lot better than, you know, you read in the workouts that, that they post on Instagram or a magazine, because especially magazines, because it's the writers that work the workouts, the write, write the workouts. It's not the actual athletes. Right. right. But they don't do that. Plus, the most of the time they're in a lot of juice, and unless you want to go that route, it could probably be a lot faster. But let's stay healthy for the sake of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, athletes have coaches too. You know, they all have multiple right. coaches. They've got a nutrition coach. They've got a strength coach, a programming coach. Yeah, yeah. Look, look at Frazier. Frazier has a strength coach, a rowing yeah. coach, a nutritionist. Yeah. He's got a sprint coach at the high school he sprints at. Yeah. He's got like five different coaches. That's why he's the best. You know, and do you think if you're a normal person trying to achieve these crazy goals, like you, like you, you don't need a coach for that? That's like crazy talk. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's go into a nutrition myth that, that you guys can debunk kind of a popular one out there that you think people really still need to hear. All right. So we could go two routes. I'll let you know which you tell me which one you want to go down. Um, we can totally talk about bad diets uh, or we can talk about the frequency of meal timing. And if you have to eat in certain windows or eat every two to three hours, you tell me which one you think your listeners would like more. I think we're going to have to do both since you just threw both really good <laughs> ones out there. So right. we got to go get Marcus downstairs. Marcus is going to join us for the rest of this because my mother-in-law is leaving. The baby's house. So he Sounds should be good. good. If not, we'll put it in the other room. Um, all right. So let's talk about bad diet because this is something that I just touched on. And I think so many times people see the advertisements because marketers, let's be honest, are fantastic at what they do. Yeah. Um, the supplement industry and the diet industry is actually a $72 billion industry, which is insane, right? Yeah. Um, and so they see these things like keto or um, Adkins or, you know, uh, trying to think of another one, <laughs> um, the juice cleanses or the detoxes. And they see these pictures and advertisements online. And of course, it's appealing to the eye, right? They, those marketers are hitting them where they are in pain. They want to lose weight fast and this is going to be the quick fix. Yep. Yet so many people have then wasted all of this money and not seeing any results. So let's talk keto because that's kind of the biggest one I think that's super popular right now, right? Well, there's a couple of things that I would say about this. I personally, as a coach, don't believe in removing one macronutrient entirely because oh. your body needs carbohydrates, especially if you're someone who is training, it fuels your body. Carbs are the primary fuel source of your body. Hello, buddy. I really hope people are watching this right now because, like, the cutest yeah. month old baby is like in the room. Ready for Halloween? It says little boo. Hi, bud. Love so, it. you know, you're removing an entire food group. And ultimately, what can happen digestively is that you lose the enzyme if you're doing keto properly. You, you, over time, you will lose the digestive enzymes to actually be able to bring carbs back into your diet if you're doing this, you know, for a long period of time. So, when you see these marketing or advertisements and you see this quick, fast weight loss, you don't see the pain and suffering on the other side of being at the Christmas dinner table. And if you're doing keto in the right way, you're not eating 99% of the things that are there. Right. Um, you're testing your urine every day. You are, um, you know, basically committing to removing carbohydrates for the rest of your life. If you're going to do this the right way. That said, I do think there is a time and a place or you could do it temporarily to see if you feel better. You would definitely do it if you have a medical concern. Um, there's a lot of research that's been done that shows that people with certain diseases, it can be helpful. But to the general population who the marketers are targeting, it actually does more damage in the long term. So I'll give you a true story that just happened a couple of weeks ago. I met with a lady. She came to me. She's tried everything. Um, we were meeting in person and I asked her to bring in what she was taking that she had purchased online. And it was a, a keto pill that she had purchased for $95. And I said, you know, how is this working for you? Tell me about your digestive system and have you been going to the bathroom? Because on my end, I'm reading this and there's three laxatives in one pill. And she actually says, very embarrassingly, 
yes, I have been having a lot of issues and I've been having to go to the bathroom a lot and I actually had to leave work one day because I cracked my pants. And it breaks my heart because people don't know what they don't know and they're being right. sold these products, right? Because that's the quick fix that they want and they think that this is healthy for them to do. And, and ultimately they're not educated enough to know what's in the product. So I think just being very cautious and knowing that there are side effects Everything in life that we do has a ripple effect. And so if it's something that we're trying to do fast, weight loss, there's going to be metabolic um, you know, backlash. There's yeah. going to be sacrifices. You know, um, a lot of people say, well, it worked for my friend. And so that's why I started to do it. And you know, I've asked multiple people, do you think this is going to be long-term for you? Because if it worked for your friend, that's great. But did she tell you about all the times that she packed her food and went here and, you know, didn't have the things like a glass of wine? Well, on keto, you can have wine, but didn't maybe have a beer or whatever that looks like that other people are not willing to give up. They only see the front line. They don't see right. all the things behind it, right? So I think it's just very important to be aware and do your research of how your decisions are going to impact you long term so that you can, again, stop wasting time trying to get to your goals. Yep. Yep. Well, I mean, it's, it's why I've always said, like, ask someone who has lost the weight and kept it off longer than three years, because that's someone with, with information and a story to tell. Um, just like I don't, and I don't knock anybody who makes a million dollars in 90 days. Amazing. Great. You learn something, you figure something out, like, um, that's incredible, but I'd much rather talk to the entrepreneur who has been in the game for 20 years and weathered like, two different like economic downturns and understand yeah. how to weather the storms because obviously yeah. they have some knowledge that the the person who did something fast didn't. And you know, if it's, yeah. if it's got a name to it diet wise, um, you know, yeah. I am doing keto. I am doing a thing, right? It's very external. It's outside of you. Whereas you're trying to bring it internal and make it an intrinsic way of living so I think yeah. that's always a thing too. Like, is this a way that you want to be living? Because right now it's got a label on it that's outside of you. Um, right. So, yeah. And be no, cautious think. too of anything with a, a timeline, right? Like 30 days. Like, so the whole 30, I actually do think the whole 30 is great in, in broad scope, right? Yeah. But yeah. you have a time frame, And so for people mentally, they come in, like, let's, another great example is like these six week challenges that you're seeing that are advertised, right? They come in and mentally it's only short term. They're not thinking long term where I want to get to that root pot, root emotional why of the person. Why did they want to lose the weight and get there and sustain it? It's not a six week thing. It's not a 30 day thing. This is something that you're going to do and it's going to become your lifestyle so that you can be the person you want to be long term. Yeah. Well, I think it's acknowledging the fact that if you are jumping to sign on to something that is six weeks or shorter, um, it is probably coming from either just an excitement phase of, oh, I could do this and solve this problem. Yeah. Oh, wait, great. So it's like the new flashy thing that the marketing caught your eye and, and, that, yeah. and it worked. The marketing worked. Or it is coming from a place of desperation and pain, um, yeah. but not from an awareness standpoint. And that's, that's hard to teach and explain but an awareness that it's not going to be that you're still doing it from a quick fix standpoint yeah. uh, as opposed to an adoption of of lifestyle standpoint so yeah. but i always try and explain like yeah we some of the latest research is showing that it, it takes about 88 days for habits to truly stick it obviously depends on the frequency yeah. um which which we practice but it's definitely not this 21 day thing and it's definitely yeah. not even 42 days of a six-week challenge no. type thing so right right well, you know, and then the other thing too, is, so you mentioned 21 you know, days. Longevity. Right. Um, you cut out there for a second, but you mentioned 21 day fix. And I think this takes me back again to the Beachbody days. What people don't tell you is how many times they've done that 21 day fix. Right. Right. It wasn't 21 days where they got those results. That was maybe three or four rounds of doing the 21 day fix. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I totally am on board with uh, what I call diet breaks. So if I'm yes. with a client, we will go through periodization, we'll cycle them, we'll give a, a week or two of a diet break here and there because none of us mentally want to be in a diet or, you know, tracking calories or macros or whatever that looks like for someone forever. 
we need a break. We need, you know, I do a free meal where I don't track it. Art and I go, we have dinner. I make good choices. I'm aware of what I'm doing. I have no guilt around it. And then the next day just looks like a normal day, right? Whereas some people, they do these 21 day or 30, let's say 42 day detox program. And then they face plant into pizza, ice cream, beer, followed by tequila shots. And let's, you know, call and order more food, whatever that looks like for some people, they do it for short term so that when that date ends, they've ended their diet plan. And right. now they're going to go back to the old habits and the old ways. And it's kind of this cycle then that repeats itself. I think we see this a lot with new year's uh, resolutions, right? They get really gung ho in the beginning and then they fall off. And so now 2020, which we're actually, I think is exciting turning a new decade, but they set a new New Year's resolution rather than setting goals for the year and for their life that's going to be long term. Yeah, yeah, no, and it's tied to that scale. <laughs> Just to bring yeah. it back to what you yeah. started I with, scaled it scaled on. <laughs> yeah. Well, awesome, awesome. So I know we could go down the rabbit hole for debunking myths and stuff forever, um, but uh, you know we're going on an hour, and I know you got little yeah. markets there. Um, so, so I think we'll. I just want to kind of ask where uh, people can find you and follow because your stuff on, on uh, your nutrition Instagram page is really, really good and, and whatever else you got. So where can yeah. people uh, link up to follow and then reach out if they needed? Yeah. Yeah. So Instagram is a great place um, for me. It's Liz Roman nutrition. Um, Strength Republic official is also where we've been putting up some of these videos. You can link out there to our YouTube. Um, both of us are on Facebook, of course. And then arts is real art Roman. Yeah, I'm a real art Roman, and baby is best baby on the block. He has his own Instagram. His own Instagram. <laughs> best baby on the block. I love it. <laughs> good, good stuff. All right, and then uh, my last question. Well, actually, um, the, the gym, because uh, if anybody is in your guys' area, so what specific yeah. area of, of Chicago? So we are in Lyle. Uh, we're in the West suburbs. We're right by Naperville. That's a pretty popular suburb right by us. So we're in Lyle. Um, again, strengthrepublic.com, Strength Republic Official on Instagram and Facebook. Sweet. I'll link that up as well. Just in case we have any listeners and they're like, man, they know what they're doing. I, yeah. <laughs> I can trust them. <laughs> so this is good. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> they come on for Marcus now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's true. I mean, that's what happened when, when we had our son. All of a sudden, I think people are just showing up. Hoping my wife was going to bring it. <laughs> They're not working out anymore. They're just babysitting yeah. the kid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I love it. All right, so last question, you know, and just thinking of uh, the entire journey that people go on and uh, in this transformational process and really what uh, all the different truths that they have to kind of succumb to and, and meet themselves with and, and just kind of curious what you believe it truly takes to transform. Yeah. You know, I think it's as simple as one decision of choosing yourself and choosing to be better every single day. When you make a decision, you're not going to give up on yourself that this is going to be a lifestyle change. Your whole mindset shifts versus again, like what we just talked about, a time frame of 21 or 30, 42 days. So it's as simple as deciding that you are a priority and that this is your life and you're going to own it and you're going to be 1% better every day. That's mine. Yeah, well, I truly think, because a lot of people ask me, like, why why do you get up at 4 in the morning every day? Like, Monday through Sunday, for 4 a.m. I get up. Well, I don't have to. I, I can sleep in, right? But like, it comes down to, like, what, what is your motivation? Like, what is your why? You're deep inside. So, like, if you guys haven't read Simon Sinek's, like, get into the why book, like, read that. It's mm -hmm. really, and you, you know, it's really good. But, you know, like, what is your why, like, deep into your belly? You know, for most people... You know, like the, the hierarchy of priorities is usually, you know, your husband, your kids, stuff, and then yourself in the bottom, right? And it's for a lot of women that we talk to, it's kind of sort of like that, right? So I, ideally, in my opinion, like the hierarchy should be God, if you believe in God or believe in something, right? Yourself, and then your spouse, and then the kids, and then other stuff, yeah. like work and other stuff. So if, if you start to focus in, things in that order, you start to prioritize yourself more, right? Above stuff that matters a little bit less, right? Because yeah. if you're not there strong for yourself, if you can't take care of yourself, 
and you're, you're always putting your husband or your wife first and something happens to them, like then what? You know, people get lost. Like if they, you know, someone dies or if they go through a divorce, for example, yeah. right? So once you really find that deep why inside, and my mind really changed since we're having this little, little monster here. <laughs> You know, that's why I, I get up at four in the morning every day. So I, I can be strong for my son and my wife and myself. So I can protect them. So I can provide for them. You know, for, for me, you know, tra training in the gym is such an output with, 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 that goes into the other aspects of my life. You know, so if I'm get, doing better in the gym, if I'm doing better, my, if my body's getting better, then it relates to my, my work is getting better. My relationships are getting better. Because they're all kind of stressed from the same thing. Yeah. I love it. I love it. All I was thinking what you're saying is how you live is how you lead, you know, and, and how you're living is how you're leading for him to grow up and be and uh, how leading for each other. Um, so super powerful. I mean, that's definitely, definitely when you have a, a powerful why and you make that, it's going to solidify. So. Well, yeah. awesome, you guys. Greatly appreciate it. Nothing but knowledge bombs for sure. Some really, really good stuff. And um, definitely the cutest episode so far. For <laughs> <anybody>. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely, you guys. Have a great one.